We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. Still trying to figure out the reason why. If it's an affair, you know, if it was some sort of financial issues. We know that Simon liked blonde, so let's try to plug in blonde and see what comes up for that. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? Mm. Hairs. Could they? We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? So clearly there must have been some hair maybe found at the scene and they're talking about dolls or she's talking about dolls so she's trying to push it off to something else. This other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? Cat flap. Blonde wig. Let's put in blonde wig. A wig? You mean but what type of wig? How about a blonde one? No, I've never worn a wig. What kind of wig? No. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It's like I suddenly didn't exist. <laughs> I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers. Drunk guys I'd met in clubs, in parks, in alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hard to look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. Okay, I'm seeing a motive of possible jealousy maybe between the two personalities and the one's life with Simon. Let's try jealous. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date, we went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me. But that was it. We didn't want another card on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean, that's when she got pregnant. From that one time. I think the motive is what I said it was. Liz's jealousy was the motive for the killing. Well, you have Eve who was upset with Hannah about Hannah going out and having this grand life of being married. You know, Hannah gets pregnant. Eve wanted to be the first one to sleep with Simon. 
we can see where the problems were, were going to start to come out of this. I mean, I don't know if Carl's going to lead us anywhere. Um, you know, I can put up, well, Carl brought us three videos. <laughs> Was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <sighs> we were 15. No, um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. It's stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realise who's really important to you, you know? Family. I see like a tattoo, and sometimes she's dressed very conservatively, right? And sometimes she's dressed very laid back. So I am seeing the differences in regards to the personalities and what they project. Yeah. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it, and they wouldn't have had the money to buy it was so huge. <laughs> it must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It's a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale, little furniture, the lights work, mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it, invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork for them all, passports, diaries, we gave them all really elaborate stories. Once a moth got trapped in there, we'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. No, he doesn't have any tattoos. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. Um, he's not got his glasses on here though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know, when he has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not book so much, but watching TV. He likes TV. Oh, my tattoo. <laughs> I got it to express my individuality. It's an apple and a snake. An apple and a snake. So I moved out. Got a small bed set. Got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings. So I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. He saw me singing one of my shows, pure chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously I knew who he was, but he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. Guess my name from my tattoo. <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome, but that would impress me. I enjoyed talking to him. 
was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. I'm thinking one of the personalities definitely got mad at Simon for sleeping with the other personality. Maybe Hannah was the one that killed Simon for sleeping with Eve. Even though, you know, it's the same body, just different minds. As an investigator, right, you sometimes have your theory and you try not to have your theory before you get all the facts. So far, this case has taken us two different possible ways. I, I, I think that my theory of one personality killing because they were jealous of the other personality doing something that could be right. But, you know, at the beginning, they also did indicate that there were twins, possibly, or another sibling. So we have to rule that out or put that in. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in maybe twins. Twins? <laughs> really? Are you really asking me that question? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Twins. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins, magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. So we're not really solidifying anything with the twins part of it, right? Because it, it, we're not talking about a physical presence outside of what she's already said. It's just I'm not getting a, a much of a differentiating uh, body out there. We'll try sister, or let's see what comes out of this. Uh, when she went home, Simon had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Simon about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. The look on his face. She... she sent him out the house, kicked him out, called me up crying and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. My sister is gone, and she's never coming back. So it sounds like maybe Hannah is so guilty from what she may have done that she's decided to disappear, and Eve is left here to, to, to pick up the pieces. In order to try to solidify who killed who, right, whether it was Eve or whether it was Hannah, right, because Hannah presented this alibi of being in Glasgow. Let's plug in what Hannah had to say about Glasgow. I got in the car and I drove. I just kept driving north. Just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so Sleep. Yes. Wow, her hair is up. Um, I got to Glasgow. I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. 
I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash, just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. It wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice <coughs> mirror. He didn't grade the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. Look, on his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. I mean, he made the mirror. And he gave it to me. He made a mirror for her. So let's maybe mirror. The mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Now that was Hannah talking. Can you tell by the way she was dressed? Silver leaf? No. He normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. There's something in the earlier ones. Simon. Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work. Mirror making, feature windows, artistic things. Really beautiful things. Well, I'm presuming now, since the, the mirror was in the, the evidence bag, that maybe that was what was used. This is why. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes. They're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an idea, <coughs> and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us, so we could then disprove it, rather than have it linger. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch, to make sure the alibi stuck. So after reviewing everything again, we do see Eve clarifying that she was the one that put the finishing, finishing touch on the uh, watch. So that way they wanted suspicion on them, but they wanted to be able to disprove that suspicion. So her whole thing was to set the watch at a time, and I, I guess maybe during the struggle, the watch probably got broken some way, somehow, to, to make the watch stop. So it would be indicating that they were in Glasgow, or Hannah was in Glasgow at the time that the murder had occurred. I have an understanding of what's going on. Let's look at a couple of other clips, though, just to cement everything. Let's see what she has to say about her and Simon's marriage. Childhood sweethearts. Something like that. When you marry, detective. When you've been married for 10 years, stuff accumulates. You could argue about anything. And he's so nice. That doesn't help. He tries to smooth things over, and that just makes it worse. We're both passive aggressive, so we never normally argue directly about anything. 
Yes, I'm fine. No, I'm sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. It's morning sickness. No. Well, yes. He found out on my birthday. I told him I was pregnant. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince. And Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. She throws her into the wilderness and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince who's blind. But she kills him with her tears and so it's a happy ending. Is that too much? So I think it's almost like a, a comparison, right, to, uh, to her life. A, a, a way for her to almost come somewhat be free. You have Rapunzel who is innocent and then you have the mother who symbolizes evil and controlling and, and, and wanting to keep Rapunzel's life in that tower. So yes, uh, there's definitely some symbolism in between the two and probably how it correlates in her regular life. Yeah. No. No, he wasn't wearing his wedding ring. I don't see a wedding ring on Eve's hand. Oh, there's four, five videos on Figure Place. Let's see what they have to say. Fine. I've never had my Figure Place taken before. I once put my hand in the oven. Yes, yeah. In order to clean them, I changed the sheets too, with the fingerprints in all those places. Could they have been my parents' fingerprints? I'm not sure how long they last for, but is that possible? Really? Go on then, take the cup, run your fingerprints. They'll match. So that left me with even more questions than answers. So I'm, I'm, I'm noticing on these two that... That was the other question I failed. Like, when she is Eve, there's no wedding ring at all. Your so, lie detector works. And it's saying, you know, it, on, the, on the lie detector part, it's saying the only question that she failed was her name. But my thing is this, if she... Why lie about something so obvious, right? So she must have really believed that her name was, you know, Eve or Hannah or whatever she was given at the time, clearly Eve. Well, I could definitely see where folks may try to make a case that there could be twins. The reason why I don't personally feel that way is again, I'll, uh, why would one sister be living in the attic and another sister be living in the room? And then just looking at the, the evidence of everything, why would Eve really be willing to put so much of herself out for Hannah knowing that if Hannah did kill this Simon, why would she be willing to, to, to go to jail and prison for it? The majority of evidence to me points that there's a split personality situation. We have Simon, Hannah, and Eve. Hannah and Eve are two minds in one body. Crazy love triangle between you know two personalities that don't want to share. You, you see the different personalities come out. You know, Eve's the more artistic, guitar playing one you got Hannah the more conservative you know has kind of a, a way that she wants to live her life so I believe that the motive for this is jealousy so number one you have Hannah and Eve are used to sharing the same guys but Hannah pretty much puts her stamp down on Simon and says no this is my guy this is who I'm gonna be with this is who I you know who I want to have my life with then you have also the fact that Eve mentions that she could not get pregnant Hannah is able to get pregnant. And Hannah is about to have this baby and have this life that Eve wants. And Eve, you know, she wants to go ahead and, and try to take a little bit of that for herself. And when she does so, it, it, it definitely has disastrous effects. Can you imagine your split personality, your doppelganger of yourself, 
comes out and calls you and says that they found out that you've been sleeping with their significant other. Hannah goes off and she kills Simon. Hannah and Eve decide to drag Simon down to the cellar and hide him behind some bags. And they, they wind up his clock and Hannah decides to take a ride for the road, leaving poor Simon you know, uh, there in the cellar and, and, and waiting to be found. Another thing is, you know, Eve had the tendency to tell more of the truth than herself, right? Eve did not mind spilling the beans. You know, Eve had that, that weird song about the collarbone and the, you know, the, the finger bones and all of this stuff. Hannah was definitely more defensive. Very much like real life, what I'm finding out about this game is that there's no definitive ending, right? There's speculation as to why. In real life, sometimes you don't know why somebody did something. You, you, you might just know the how and the who. I like the fact that evidence, like in real life, is coming at you from different ways, different directions, and at different times. Sometimes something that happened at the very beginning, you may not find out until the middle of it because it may not be available to you. And this was very reflective of real life in that way. So I, I enjoyed it. I had a great time.